You're listening to Tim Bolkley's 5-Minute Bible. Being Ideal Readers Part 1 In which we discover the importance of a psalm When I'm explaining narrative theory to students, one of the most difficult bits to grasp is the concept of the implied reader. There are other names for this difficult concept. One of them is the ideal reader. The different names have slightly different nuances of meaning. Saying implied reader implies that real readers only get to meet these implied readers through the text itself and a good dose of background and imagination. And when you're reading narrative and you're wanting to get at these implied readers, that's really important. But that's the topic for another podcast. In this podcast, I want to focus on ideal readers. Talking about ideal readers focuses our attention on who should we be to read this text? What sort of people? What do we need to know? I'm going to illustrate it by looking at Ephesians chapter 4 with you. Ephesians chapter 4 because I preached on that on Sunday. I preached on it on Sunday because on Saturday we had our family Christmas. I know, I know, it's, it was February, it's now March. Not Christmas time at all, but Barbara and I had been in Thailand over the real Christmas, and Richard was in the Isle of Man, so this was a good opportunity to get most of us together. And Christmas is, well, apart from the religious stuff, all about presents. And so I wanted to preach about presents from the Bible. And so I preached on Ephesians 4 and focused on verses 11 to 13. They're the ones that everybody knows. The gifts he gave were that some should be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. They're words that just about everybody has heard, words that are often preached at ordination services like they were read and preached at mine years ago. But in the context of thinking about ideal readers, and so for this podcast, wanting to ask, what does a reader of this text need to know? We'll look a bit wider. You see, if you're reading the whole chapter, verses 8 to 10 seem complicated and boring, and often nowadays get left out. Therefore it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens, so that he might fill all things. And then it goes on, the bit we read before, about the gifts. Yeah, us modern readers find verses 8 to 10 complicated and boring. But if you read through the chapter, you notice how stressed they are in the text. They mattered. Now, verse 8 is quite clear. It's the picture of a conquering hero. A conquering hero holding his triumph and bringing presents for the people. Yeah, you knew about that stuff, didn't you? Or if you didn't, a good Bible dictionary will tell you about it. Picture Julius Caesar coming into Rome after a triumphal military campaign with a whole big procession with tigers that he's captured and the rest. That's the idea. Of course, here it comes from the Old Testament. Paul is pretty much quoting from Psalm 68 or 67, depending on whether you're reading in Hebrew or English. There too, the picture is of a triumph. But, there's too much material in all this to do in one five-minute podcast, so I'll need to finish this tomorrow. But while you're waiting, why don't you look at Psalm 68 and try and work out what there is there that will help you to be a more ideal reader of Ephesians chapter 4. You see, reading the Bible is one way to become an ideal reader of the Bible. Try it. You'll like it. Bye for now. <laughs>